Welcome everybody to the Let's Build a Network series. In this sixth video of Let's Build a Network, we are going to enable IP routing. As you can see on the screen, on the PowerPoint slide, this is where we left when we configured all the VLANs, all the parameters like IP setting, tech ports, untech ports, and all the different switches. So in order to make sure that, for example, later on devices that are connecting to the 3500 can either uh, talk to devices in the finance VLAN or in the teacher VLAN, maybe based on certain policies if you want to, or maybe, maybe on servers that are connected in the services VLAN, or whatever you want to do, you need to have routing enabled. So to make sure that everybody understands, uh, devices or users that belong to the same VLAN, like student VLAN to student VLAN, or teacher VLAN to teacher VLAN, or this teacher VLAN to, to teacher VLAN on that switch, that's already running. That's already configured, that's already working because they belong to the same subnet. But as soon as you want a uh, connectivity outside of your VLAN, that's where you need to enable routing. So what are we going to do on these devices? We're going to have um, IP default gateway enabled. The default gateway is more or less only for the management VLAN to test that from the management VLAN, we can either ping the student VLAN there, or we can ping the teacher VLAN there so that we have IP connectivity. As, because on the teacher VLAN and on the student VLAN, we don't do routing on the local box here to see and understand what is happening in the environment. Of course, that is all possible. If you enable IP routing there, then you also need to put an IP address on the teacher VLAN and on the student VLAN. So let's make sure we're going to configure this uh, this IP default gateways on the 3500 and on the 2100. How we're going to do that is on the 3500, that's this particular connectivity we have, we're going to do IP default gateway and we're going to put the default gateway to the 3800 over there. Okay, so let's first see what is configured. As you can see, IP routing is disabled. There is no IP default gateway uh, configured and this is the IP address of the management VLAN. Let's go into configuration mode, IP default gateway 192.168.100.1. Let's do a show IP now. And as you can see, the default gateway is configured. So let's see what we can ping now. So of course we can ping the default gateway, but are we also able to ping, for example, now, hey, we can also ping an IP address of the 3810 in a different subnet. So the default gateway setting is working. Let's save this. Let's also do the same configuration on the 2920. We go into configuration mode again, IP default gateway. We're going to put it to 1.1 again. Let's check show IP. IP default gateway configured, routing is disabled, and of course we have the management. Let's see if we can ping 168.100.1. Uh, yes, and are we also able to ping, for example, 200.1? We also able. So we are able to reach the IP addresses of the 3810, which is our default gateway. So let's save this. So now, to understand what is happening here, is let's do a show IP here. As you can see, IP routing is disabled. But um, you can see that all these IP addresses are on the same box, so it understands that if I ping that particular address, that it, uh, what route it needs to take back. But let's say, for example, I now want to ping from this device uh, to the 2920, or, for example, uh, from my laptop to a certain IP address on, uh, on this particular field. In order to understand this IP routing and why we need to enable IP routing, I'm going to temporarily uh, put an IP address on the finance VLAN, just to make sure that you understand what's happening. And if we do show IP here, you can see that finance is in the 220.1. So if I go into VLAN 400, I'm going to do put IP address 192.168. 220.3 for example slash 24 okay so now if I ping from here 
to 20.3, uh, you can see that I can ping because it is in the same VLAN, in the same subnet. But if I ping from here, I can ping to 20.1, you can see that's this IP address, but can I also ping now to 20.3, and now I'm not able to ping anymore. You can see I got a request timeout because there is no way that the routing is working at the moment. In order to get that working, we need to do one tiny step, and that's enable, go in configuration mode, IP routing, yeah, now I have show IP, I have enabled IP routing, and I can uh, also uh, show IP root. I can also show you the IP routing table. As you can see, this is all directly connected, meaning it knows all the routes because everything is directly connected to the switch. If I now do this ping, you can see that I can ping through the 3810 to the 2920, back to the 3810, uh, back to the 3500. So now my IP routing is working. We need to do one tiny step because we also want to have connectivity uh, in from my client. In order to do that, I need to add an IP uh, an uh, IP default gateway also here. So I go to properties of my network adapter, go into IP version four. As you can see, I have a static IP address. Later on in the following videos, we're also going to add DHCP and then you will push the default gateway via DHCP. But let's add the default gateway here. Or let's first, sorry, let's first do a tiny test and let's see what we can ping. So and remember that this client is connected to the 3810. So if everything is correct, I can ping 100. You can see I can ping. Can I also ping, for example, 200.1? I'm not able to ping 200.1. Okay, I'm not able to ping the other addresses here. So what if we do this? We're going to add the default gateway here. Uh, 168.100.1. See what's happening now. And as you can see, I can now ping the other IP addresses. Can I also ping to 10.3, for example? No, but we don't have an IP address there. That's 220.3. And as you can see, go from the client to the 3810 to the 2920 and back to this one. So we have the full routing configured at the moment. So let's take one step back. So besides that we have running, that we have this running here, uh, all the VLANs, we also have IP routing enabled so that they can reach each other. Later on, we will make sure that, for example, if you add a client in the student VLAN, it will get a DHCP address uh, for the right VLAN in combination with the default gateway so that it can reach uh, the different subnets if needed. What I will do now is I will move, remove the, um, uh, this IP address here uh, so that we and save it here, save the config here, and just to make sure to save the config here. So, we also have IP routing configured for our tiny networking infrastructure to make sure that we can reach each other in the different VLANs. Like this video, do a thumbs up. I hope you, I hope you support us, leave comments and subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much and hope to see you next time.